Ladies and gents, we are back in the saddle, maybe a couple shades darker, and we have completed our second 50K ultra marathon, and I have still yet to do an official marathon. I just skipped that. I went to the 50K, which is like 30-ish miles, a little over 30 miles. In this video, I want to kind of recap the race. I have some footage that I wanted to share, and um, it won't be too long. I'll try to keep under 10 minutes, and uh, yeah. So first things first, this is my second 50K. I ran a 50K back in Austin, Texas in November early November 2023. This was on the 24th of February 2024, a couple months later, and it was the Copper Corridor 50k by Era Viper Running. They had a bunch of different distances. My sister and I did the 50k. She was originally supposed to do the 50k with me in Austin. The Rattler run back last year, she got hurt, couldn't do it. She was good to go. It was her spring break, so we're like, let's do it. Plus, I had the experience of doing one, so I kind of knew what to expect to a degree of how you're going to hurt, drinking water, eating, you know, all that stuff. So it was a little bit easier on her. She didn't have to worry as much about the unknowns because I kind of went through that. Now, I'll start with where it was, the course, and then I'll walk through the whole thing and then overlay some footage because I think it's pretty cool. So it was in Superior, Arizona, which is about an hour to an hour and a half outside of Phoenix, depending on what area of Phoenix you're coming from. Scottsdale uh, or south, southeast, like Chandler, Arizona, not as far. If you're coming from the west side of Phoenix, going to be a little bit further. And you drive out, and I forget exactly how high the elevation was, but it's a couple thousand feet up where the race takes place, I believe. And then you traverse around Picket Post Mountain, and then you come back into the town. So it starts in downtown, and we run downtown from downtown, down the street, out into the trails, and then out towards Picket Post Mountain. It's this massive, massive mountain that you're staring at, and then we run around it. You gotta kind of go deep back behind it, come back, and then we run back into town, essentially. So it all comes out to be a little over 30 miles, and uh, we did a little bit more, but more on that in a second. Before the gun went off, it was a little bit dark, and then the sun started to come up. The setting is just absolutely beautiful. From someone who has lived in, or really on the East Coast, eastern third of the US, for the majority of my life, like the vast majority of my life, was there a couple years in Austin. This, and even Austin doesn't, you, you can't even compare. It doesn't, it's Austin's, you know, generally flat. And the scenery, just the landscape, to me, absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. We also got a nice day. It was mostly sunny, some high clouds, but I mean, just a beautiful day. February, it was like 75 degrees. You couldn't have asked. I couldn't have asked for a better setting, a better landscape, better views, just absolutely beautiful. So we start off, I, I actually didn't start my watch. <laughs> I didn't start my watch till maybe like a third of a mile down the hill. Um, so my numbers maybe was just shy of what we actually ran. But again, when you're running 30 plus miles, it doesn't matter an extra half mile. I don't care. I, I what if, if it's, I'm going to run an extra half mile, <laughs> I don't really give a shit to be honest with you. So we come down, we cross this little bridge. Everyone's bouncing along the bridge. And then we start running through the trails as the sun starts to come up. The sun is up at like 7 a.m. The, the race went off at 7 a.m. So the sun hits Picket Post Mountain. So you're just looking at this beautiful beast in front of you, which is now all lit up, but you're down kind of in the valley almost. So the sun hasn't hit you yet because it's got to come up over the mountains over on the east side. And so we're going and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And we got a couple miles in and that's when we started going up this hill. And that's when the sun hit us because we finally got high enough. The sun was high enough up to where we could see it. I mean, just an absolute beautiful scene. So a couple miles in, we hit this first hill, pretty much just, you know, walk up the hill. You know, it's kind of, we did a really good job, I think, my sister and I, of, of jogging a large majority of this. The one, the, the difference here is that we spent a lot of time at aid stations, uh, bathroom breaks, and my stride is substant my walking stride my hiking uphill stride is substantially larger than hers so i can move really really well uphill or during walking like i could be doing like 17 minute miles 16 minute miles walking no running 
she can't do that. She just hasn't had the experience of practice and also her just her stride's not as, as large, right? So that definitely compared to my other um, 50K was a big contributing factor just to, to slowing the pace down a bit, but it's all good. I, I, I'm not, it was not, it was never about the pace, how fast we can go. It was, let's just get to the finish line and enjoy it. And being my second 50K, kind of having the experience of doing one of these before, I mean, it was awesome because I never was super, super taxed, whether that was cardiovascularly or from like a muscular standpoint. I, I was hurting by the end, don't get me wrong, but I was never super, super taxed. So I was able to really just soak it all in and like, I thought it was absolutely awesome. So we go through, you get to about like seven or eight miles in and there's an aid station. We have a peanut butter and jelly. I th actually, I think I had a peanut butter and jelly and I had a, uh, a bag of pretzels, some salt, pop that down. We go out to like the, I forget, it was like lost mine turnaround. We get out to that point and then we come back to that same aid station at Picket Post Mountain. And we're at this point a little over 10 miles in. At this point, we now have about an, a, roughly an 11 mile stretch until the next aid station. So you get to pretty much go all the way around the entire mountain or most of it until the next aid station. And so that was where they were kind of saying, hey, like at this point, it was 9 a.m., the left or 9 a.m., sun's up, it's getting hot, you know, make sure you're hydrated, make sure you have enough water, snacks, whatever you need, because, you know, it's going to be kind of far. And it's a lot of that it was uphill. So not huge hills, but just kind of steady, you know, rolling hills, and then general gradual incline from that aid station at Picket Post Trailhead to uh, the next aid station, which was at like 21.7 miles, roughly. And uh, this is now where you catch the Arizona Trail. So you get to run on part of the Arizona Trail. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Once you're out uh, a little bit away from the trailhead, you, know, you don't see any more cars. All you see is massive cactus, uh, all you all around, cacti all around, beautiful trails, single track, you know, rolling hills, just the landscape, the mountain. It was just like, I, this is like, I don't know how, I really don't know how you could draft up a, a cooler place to run. I'm sure, you know, every place had its own unique, you know, aspects to it. But like from seeing mountains, cactus over here, beautiful trail over here, rolling hills. I mean, it was just, it was gorgeous. Uh, especially this time of year, you know, it's not super, super hot. So you're out in the desert, but it's like, oh man. So we, this next 10 miles or so, let's call it the next 11 miles. That was the grind. That was where it was definitely challenging. It was definitely, you know, like we're just gonna get through this first five, not too bad. That second five of that, or that's that next, let's say from mile 15 to mile, you know, 21, it was a grind. And then there were some major downhills with just absolutely layered with rocks. So every step is like your feet are like this because there's just no flat trail to run, um, which. I, <laughs> All you could do is laugh. All you can do is just enjoy the moment, really, to be honest. This is how I, I had to view it, but that was tough. We finally come across, we come around this turn and you look up and there's like a, a Jeep at the top of this hill and we're like, is that the next aid station? And that's where it was. So we get to that aid station and we drink. And shortly after this, um, there were some uh, officers, I don't know if who, they were police officers specifically, or if they're working for the park and whatever, or for, I guess, the state and they were brought in to help kind of make sure everyone's safe. They were trying to extract someone out because I think someone had hurt their knee. And uh, this is where it got a little confusing. I think we, we must have missed the trail. My sister was not too happy later, but we then we then saw someone who was ahead of us running at us. And we're like, uh, who's wrong here? She kept going. We were like, let's just go this way and see where we messed up. We end up running a approximately one and a half to two miles extra got this other aid station which was not part of our course and they were like hey what are you doing here pretty much then they told us to go back we went back got back on the trail and continued so that next stretch which was supposed to be like 6.2 miles ended up being like eight ish miles so we you know not ideal but we got it done and then from there last aid station or we, we get towards the last aid station uh, and we're running through some dirt roads back on some small trails we can see the town in the distance and then the final stretch we're coming up and you're running back uphill slight incline into the town of superior into the finish line and we got it done in i believe under under eight hours is what it took us um i don't know how many feet a couple thousand feet of elevation gain three thousand plus feet of elevation gain i believe 
Strava said one thing, my watch said one thing. I don't know who to believe. We did stop, I wanna say for about 45 minutes. My watch calculated, or I, I believe, we had seven hours and 15 minutes of moving time or around there, and then 45 minutes of kind of stationary time. That was at aid stations, that was at bathrooms, you know. And so we, we really took our time and enjoyed it. And then we added an extra mile and a half. So we probably could have done it faster. If we really, really pushed, if we were trained better, yes. But all in all, I thought this was one of the most incredible experiences. I would 100% do it again. Maybe next year I will do it again. Uh, and if you are watching this and don't know who I am and just because you saw the name, this is 100%, in my opinion, an amazing race to run. Everybody puts on a great show in terms of you know, aid stations. They do it right. They seem to be you know, one of the best in the business. Uh, a little confusing with that spot we got lost, but other than that, the markings were great. I think that was just my bad of just not paying attention at that time and also not downloading the course map or, and stuff ahead of time. So I was kind of going off of like, no, oh, I should be fine. I'll, I'll see. At that point, right, everyone spreads out. So I, I'm, we're not running. We don't see anyone in front of us and no one behind us. You know, everyone's kind of spread out enough to where like you're not really following the crowd anymore. You kind of have to make sure you know where you're going. And that was just, to be honest, probably my bad but um that was that and coming up i have completely separate from like what i mostly post on this channel i have another ultra which is the cruel jewel 50 which is like 57 miles in the mountains of north georgia 17,000 feet of elevation gain that is going to be a beast so the next two and a half months i will be outside training for that hope this was helpful hope it was cool and i'll see you guys in the next one peace